All right, here we go, guys. And I figured it was about time I gave an update on my boat, the Eastward 24 Seaward, uh, first year owning it. I wanted to do a 100-hour update. You can see the flags today. We have a 20-mile-an-hour steady gusts uh, up to 30. Um, stiff east wind today. We are at, let's see if we can get a shot of this on the Mercury Vessel view. We are at 118 hours. Uh, I put the boat in at the end of May and it, it is now, what is it, August 8th or 9th today? I don't know, it's it's Friday, uh, August 8th, I guess. Let's take a quick look. Yeah, August 8th. So, you know, we've put 118 hours. I got the boat with half an hour in a little over two months. Um, we've been using it a lot. And uh, this video is going to be to give you a 100-hour update. 118 hour, but we'll say a 100-hour update. And uh, tell you the things I like and I don't like about the boat. Like, uh, th there's no such thing as a perfect boat. Um, but with this boat, it's mostly good. It really is. But the one thing that I absolutely cannot stand on this boat is I have it pretty full of fuel right now. You can see down here, I have 255 gallons. The boat holds 300 gallons. It is a 24, and I wanted to show this before we took off. Again, full disclosure, a little hard to see, but man, when the boat is full of fuel, it sits bow heavy, and water just does not want to get out. So when I'm cleaning the boat, those gutters on the side, uh, unless I take the boat out again after I clean it and get up on plane to get that water to go out, it does not want to get out. Now, it's not dangerous when, when it rains, the water does make its way out, but it just on its own does not have enough downward inertia to get it out. It just kind of lingers there. Again, if it rains hard, it, it gets out. Um, but that's something, and, and look, I have a very unique build. My build is very forward console oriented. Um, all the weight is in the forward third of the boat. I had the mezzanine seating. You'll also see the fuel tanks. There's the access port for one. The second, I mean, this is the same side. This is the starboard side. Um, same on this side. The fuel tanks are in the forward third of the boat. So when it is loaded with fuel like today, 250 plus gallons at six gallons uh, a pound, six plus gallons a pound, you know, when, when I have 300 gallons in, it's, it's 1,800 plus pounds of fuel in the front plus the forward console. So um, I believe this was the first one eastward built like this. Uh, look, when, when the fuel runs a little low, it's no issue. But when it is full, you get that. That's, that's absolutely the number one thing I hate about the boat. Um, and it's a minor thing. It's not dangerous. It's, it's just uh, an annoyance, if you will. Um, the thing I love the most about the boat is its performance. And we're, we're about to open it up here again. You can kind of, it's a really windy day. I, you know, my charter was canceled today and I figured uh, a good day to show its capabilities. Now, this is Peconic Bay here in Eastern Long Island. We're somewhat sheltered, but I'm gonna head into Gardner's Bay where we're gonna have that east wind hitting us and we're gonna run it through its paces a little bit and I'll check in once we're there and give you more of the likes and don't likes. But in the first instance, the thing I really like, and we're gonna switch camera views now to the, uh, to the camera I have sitting atop my head here. I'm gonna put this uh, camera down. We're gonna show, and maybe I'll just keep this camera on the, uh, on the GPS so we can see the performance. But I'm gonna show its blistering acceleration. And that goes back to those two motors, the Merc 225s, naturally aspirated. They are torque monsters. It's a lot of power for a relatively small compact package like this. And yeah, you really feel like you're, you're on a bass boat or something. I mean, it, it just takes off. Let's keep our eye on the speedometer. I have it on single throttle mode, which is something I love. Um, and we'll, we'll open it up and we'll see how she does. I mean, just, just, and I have the bumpers out. <laughs> just incredible. 
Uh, the only thing I would recommend is put the bumpers in. But hey, while we're putting the bumpers in, let's add this to the things of likes. These rod holder uh, bumper holders, they are awesome. Easy in and out. I stole them away when, uh, when, we were, when we're fishing. That's another thing I love about this boat, the amount of storage. I put these bumper guards in here. This is my cleaning supplies. These two are storage for clients. It is big and roomy. I have the life jackets up there. The amount of storage on this boat is great. I also have this whole area of storage. I have all my fishing gear here. Um, storage is definitely something on the good list. So like I said, we're gonna run about five, six miles east, get into the teeth of the wind in Gardner's Bay, and we'll check back in and, and I'll, I'll show you guys uh, the boat running through its paces. And that's definitely on the love side too, the ride of this boat. It is phenomenal, phenomenal especially at speed and we'll we'll go through that in a minute just give a quick update on the fuel mileage 33 miles an hour burning 16 and a half exactly two miles a gallon um, we're going into the wind we're driving east uh, and we're full of fuel now it's just me on the boat but still a still a good indicator of the consistent fuel mileage i get at cruise it's it's relatively consistent at two miles a gallon. When I'm light, I see better. I see the two 1.5 to two two. But uh, yeah, when it's full of fuel like it is today, that's a consistent number. Now for real, I'll check back in when we're into that rougher stuff. It's our first bit of chop here. And you really don't feel it. It just slices through it, especially, especially this bait chop. And should have mentioned this earlier the GoPro is not going to do a good job showing how rough it is it just won't let's also give a shot of the back people complain about the boat spraying back there the engines getting all soaked doesn't happen on mine. I've seen videos of it happening on other boats. Absolutely not an issue with mine. And the thing is, you are very comfortable. We're not bouncing. We're not going up and down. We're in a bit of a foot and a half, two foot chop. You really do not feel it. You just don't feel it. It's hard to explain till you've ridden in it. Uh, now don't get me wrong. I wouldn't feel this on my 32 CV either because of the length of the boat. But I would have felt this on my 25 Kobe on every other boat I owned before that. All right, we're a little more into it here. Again, really hard to ever pick up how big these waves are, but it's just a dry, comfortable ride. I mean, we don't pound, it just slices through them, the thin twin hulls. Um, yeah, I mean, these are days, if I was in my 23 Maycraft, I would be turning around. I'd be going out in my 25 Cobia, but a lot slower than this, and I'd have the tabs fully down, and we'd be getting a lot more spray than this. Uh, going dead into the wind now, it's a solid two foot chop, and you don't feel it. You don't feel it. Um, it's hard to explain until you've ridden in one, but you just absolutely don't feel it. And we'll, we'll slow down in a second. I'm slowing down now. You'll get an idea of how, how choppy it is. You'll also get an idea of one of the negatives of the boat, which is something called sneezing. And there it is. When you go slow in this kind of chop, you get that moist, that, that, that mist, pardon me, not moist, that mist, that gets uh, caught under the tunnel and it spits up. And it's very much, and you'll get, this will give you an idea on how rough it is. And, and there it is, that's a sneeze. And it doesn't happen when we're going fast, but it happens when we're going slow. And this will give you an idea, like I said, of, of the, the water I'm in right now and how, how I'm, and I'll, I'll 
I'll open the throttles again, we'll go through this, and you'll see that when you are on speed, you just don't feel it. I mean, it just gets on top of it, and we are just slicing through these waves. I mean, th these are, I I'd say legit, two and a half, three footers at this point. Again, the GoPro never does it justice, but we're just slicing through them. Slicing through them. You can see I'm comfortable. I could be sitting down right now, I really could. And we're probably going a little too fast anyway. I'll slow it down a hair. But it's just very, very, very comfortable. And you feel very safe in this boat with the high gunnels. And like I said, once you modulate it, get that speed down, we're going about 25 and a half, 26 right now. It's just a very, very comfortable ride through this. Now, the other thing that I would put on the I don't like category on this boat, and that would be something called, uh, and I'm drawing a blank now on what it's called. Uh, what the heck do we call it again? Um, the snap roll. Oh my God, I think my brain is going through snap roll. And snap roll is when we are drifting, when we are at rest. It won't happen when we're underway. But when we are at rest and we have that very short choppy sea and it hits us beam two, the boat will do an exaggerated rock where a monohull might take it a little smoother. Um, and this is not unique to the eastward. It's a characteristic of most cats, snap roll. It's a very unnerving feeling. The good thing with this boat is we have these ultra high gunnels. I'm six feet tall and you can see it's even back here, even at the stern of the boat, um, you don't feel it. You don't feel it. Um, I mean, you feel the snap roll, but you feel safe. Now, I have a, a client of mine, Dan, uh, he's on his second cat. His first cat was a, was a 23 world cat and he got rid of it because his wife was afraid every time they were just uh, in the bay at, at, you know, at rest and get hit by wakes from other boats and you'd feel it. And it, it's a scary feeling. But again, high gunnels, they moved up to a 25 World Cat or a 27 World Cat, I don't remember. But the 23 World Cat had very low gunnels. Um, this boat doesn't have that issue. Um, all right. Now let's uh, run into these following seas. We'll get back into the protection of Peconic Bay. And uh, I'll offer my closing thoughts on the 100 hours. Let's see her plane off in the following sea. Going 34 miles an hour. She's catching some air, but she does land soft. Again, that'll give you an idea of this crazy east wind we're dealing with. And I have no business going this fast in this kind of sea, but again, you feel very, very safe in this. And even when it gets out of the air, which it will do if you hit a big enough wake, it lands so soft. All right, guys, we're, we're back in the relative protection of the bay, but you'll see it's still, it's still choppy in here. Um, so, uh, you know, I mentioned in the beginning my one big hate, which is how the water gets trapped in here. You'll see it's all gone now. It, it literally just happens after I clean the boat or if it rains and it's full of fuel like it is now. Um, would I buy this boat again? A hundred percent, yes. And twice on Sunday, to be honest with you. It's just... For what I do, it's perfect. Four people fish along the side here. My charters are limited to four people. Five can be squeezed in, but four is the nice, comfortable number. We've had people out in the, in the ribs bass fishing, uh, plenty of room. Uh, the boat is wide and stable. When I get, the other thing I, I should have mentioned, um, when I get home with the CV, which I loved, but 25 degrees of dead rise, when I jump in the shower after a fishing trip, I would, uh, I would have like, daytime vertigo or, or 
uh, land sickness, as I called it. I'm sure there's a better way of explaining it. Um, but you're you're rocking and rolling all day. You don't realize it, um, and that's true with most deep V single hull boats. You don't realize how you're how you're just rocking all day, and you realize it when you get home and you're not moving, especially when you get in the shower. Don't know why it happens when you're in the shower, maybe because you're closing your eyes when you put the shampoo in, I don't know, um, but I don't get that with this boat. It is very, 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 very stable. And the other thing I love is my electronic setup. Uh, it's just perfect. Jack at Blue Jay Marine did a great job. And definitely add, and I should have turned on the, let's do that now, let's turn on the power. Uh, I opened it up over there. Uh, the trolling motor, the Minn Kota um, Quest Instinct. It's the self-deploy model. It, uh, you know, I'm on Minn Kota's guide program, and I, I mentioned in the other video, I did not pay for that motor. Um, they, Minn Kota's been great to me. So, you know, I, I just want a full disclosure, right? I, it, it, this is something that's coming from me as somebody who gets this for free, but, but, it is just friggin' amazing. And I'll be very honest with you, I wanted, I wanted the, uh, the self-deploy model in the first instance. I didn't want to deal with the headache of of a model that potentially could you know have more moving parts the self-deploy model probably not quite as reliable and uh, Tyson at Minn Kota said to me nope John we've tested the crap out of this on bigger boats it's we've got it down pad and I gotta say I use this every friggin trip and it's been awesome it's been awesome um, very easy to use uh, it's integrated with this with the hummingbird let's get the other camera out I've started I've started using the hummingbird more um, you can literally literally just go to your map function let's go to the map and you can you can drag a course so if if, if I want to move us there let's say I would hit go to over there and then autopilot navigation started and the Minn Kota will literally literally bring us right there um, it, it's just just incredible um, it's it's made fishing especially this windy summer so much easier for me uh, the fact that I can kind of set it and forget it with the with the Minn Kota uh, it, it's just amazing. So that's definitely on the plus side. I'm sure there's a lot of things I'm forgetting, guys. Again, we're going to go back to two camera here. You're going to see the camera on top of my head, too. I'm sure there's a lot of... And also, I don't know why, but I feel like I'm dressed for Easter today. Didn't really think this outfit out. Um, and let's let's show the stow feature one more time before we, uh, before we put it away. Very easy to stow with the remote or with the hummingbird, but I'm going to do it off the remote. Um, and I'm going to go back to depth on this, but you can see it just, it, you just hit a button and it stows away. Uh, I broke my back with the other motor, lifting it and dropping it, lifting it and dropping it. Um, it's just so much easier with this. So like I said, I'm sure there's a lot of things I'm forgetting, but definitely the positives, the performance, the big water capability of the boat, um, the fuel economy. The negatives are few. That the spray when you're going slow into into the uh, into the waves, the snap roll uh, when we're in the rips or a big boat is passing. You just got to be ready for that. Um, and the water issue here with the with the weight kind of forward. Um, but again, when when we're on plane or we have less fuel, it's not an issue at all. So that's it, guys. Leave a comment, ask questions. Uh, you know, I'm transparent, happy to answer any of your questions and offer you my truly honest opinion. Hope you enjoyed this update, this 100 hour update, which is now 119 hours. We've added about uh, half an hour since we started this video. Um, as always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. If you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing. And if you're not a member of the channel, please consider uh, becoming a member. Lots of perks associated with that. We're having actually a subscriber trip or a members only trip for Fluke in the ocean. August 31 um, and you know we don't have a lot of members so it's a pretty good chance of winning if you join through the membership icon.